I'm Courtney, your host, and I'm here this week with Natalie, also known as Maddie. Hi! Uh, and she is an on-air travel expert, so she's here to talk to us all about how to take a flawless family vacation. I'm going to try. <laughs> I don't know if it's as ever flawless. As flawless as possible. <laughs> with that being said, oh, let's my add some part. bubbles to the mixture. Hence why it's motherhood uncorked, right? Yeah. This is my favorite my whole life is motherhood uncorked. <laughs> it's like unfiltered, but a little uncorked. Yeah, and I love it. Whoa! <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, I was not, I was not expecting that to come out that fast. Oh my god. That was awesome. Startling. Okay. okay. Alright. Really Hit me. That. This is maybe oh, the best it's really I've ever. super bubbly. Cheers. Cheers. To traveling with children. Hopefully stress free. Mm. You might need a few of these when you're traveling with your kids. That's what <laughs> my husband's like, if we travel with them, you can take them on the plane and I'll have an ambient and a vodka. And <laughs> an ambient and a vodka. That's one way to do it. I'm like, oh, okay. That's one way to do it. It might yeah. actually go smoother. Yeah. That way. Yeah. Okay. So there's lots of different ways that you can travel with children. Yeah. For the purpose of this interview, we're going to talk about your average family vacation. Yeah. Getting on a plane and going to a resort. Yeah. We're not backpacking Europe with our kids. We're not taking Whole a road trip vacation. in Florida. So this is your average family vacation. All right. How to get it done. Okay. And get it done with a smile on, hopefully. All right. All okay. right. Okay. So that being said, what are some great family-friendly destinations? Obviously, there's Disney World, but... <laughs> Disney I mean, World. That's, yes, that's, a, that's a whole other that's a whole episode. episode. So, yeah. So um, besides that, so besides that, um, you want to look at a lot of uh, family-friendly resorts. A lot of resorts now do cater specifically to either adults or families, and we'll say that. Um, there's a program that I love, love, love with Paradisus, uh, and the Amelia Resort, and they have a family concierge service. So you have a concierge that turns down the, um, the bed for your kids. You have cookies and milk for nighttime, balloons in the bathtub. Um, anything that your kid needs, they'll refill your bottles. We went and stayed there once, and my son's bottle was ready every night, which was amazing. Um, you can also can I open to my house. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. I would. I wanted to take the concierge home with me for sure. Um, another uh, good uh, resort is Club Med. Now they take kids from four months up until sixteen. So if you want a break from your baby <laughs> there's someone there who can look after them as well and uh another one that we are headed to is Amelia and of course they work with fair thesis and they have the kids club as well well their kids club is from eight months up and I mean not that you want to hand your kids off for the whole time maybe you do but you know <laughs> with these with this uh with these kids clubs and baby clubs you have the option to do that or you have the option of just leaving them there for an hour and going to have a grown-up adult meal on on your own. Yeah. So, you know, if you look at your normal places, your Mexico's, um, Dominican, Caribbean, you know, anywhere in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. just, it's really the brand name that you're looking at. And most places do have kids clubs, but depending on the age of your kids, you want to see whether there are baby clubs as well. Yeah. Um, and again, just looking at the brand name and once you find one that you're comfortable with, that has medical on site, that the babysitters are trained properly and often that the babysitters have um uh don't have any other jobs outside of the resort so their right. main job is looking after your child in the resort okay you know their focus is really on your your kids okay. lives. and don't be afraid to call and ask those questions as well okay now if you don't want to leave your kid in the yes. kids club yeah can they still use the children's activities with Absolutely. you around? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, for instance, I, last time I went to Paradise, I was with my son, and he was, gosh, two, and or not, maybe not even quite two yet. I think he was just under two, and I took and played with, took him and played with him in, you know, the jungle gym in the kids area, and okay. then left him for a bit, and then came back and played with him some more, and then okay. took him to, the, you know, so you, you can still use that as well. Keep in mind, they want to make you happy. They want you to come back, right? right? So they want to figure out how they can help you and your family have a good time and want to come back 
again and again and again. Okay. <laughs> so, now we've got some ideas where we can go. Now let's talk about getting there. Okay. Flying with children. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. <laughs> yes. I mean, <laughs> I'll take another one and show you. Mm. Okay. So, children under two yes. fly free. PSA, if you didn't know, children under two fly free. Yes, they do. But they have to sit on your lap. They do. They don't get their own seat. So, that's also something to consider, too, if, yeah. if it's worth having the extra seat for you. So, if the plane isn't full, is yeah. there a way you can swindle getting yourself sat next to an extra seat? Because I just don't see, like, once the baby's mobile, they're yeah. wanting to sit on your lap the whole entire time. Yeah. Um, well, there are different ways to deal with that. Make friends with the people, um, the flight attendants, right? When they, when you get on a plane, you know, they're there all the time, working tirelessly. There are rude people that they have to deal with. And coming on, you and your, your kid or kids, I mean, just show them how, how appreciative of what they do for you. Like how you, how appreciative you are of what they do. Yeah in their role because it's not a, it's not an easy job especially no. the way that you know we bus people around on flights now they're just you know like buses in the air um if there's an extra seat and you say you know listen i would love it it would make a life a lot easier if there was an extra seat that i could sit in and you know you've been kind and you continue to be kind you know they might help you out when you're right. checking in as well if you haven't checked in online um, or even if you have, you can head to the desk and say, look, this is the situation. I was wondering if there, if there are any other seats. Um, another thing to do, which you can do, um, and what I do when we're flying with my son, excuse me, who actually will have his own seat this time for the first time, which, uh, but we have the second one, which will be on the left, uh, is to upgrade. So, and you can upgrade day of, um, somewhere like Air Transat, Sunwing, anything like that. Um, just like the Options Plus or whatever, or Elite Plus or whatever that is. And you can upgrade on the day, and it's not as expensive as buying like an Options Plus ticket from the get-go. Okay. Uh, and that gives you just that little bit of extra space that you can have the kids on your lap, and it doesn't feel like they're right in your like, face as well. So you have that okay. little bit of space. I highly, highly, highly recommend doing that. So... I mean, as adults, we know how to deal with the pressure changes that happen mm -hmm. in the airplane. We know how to equalize and things like that. Yeah. For a little kid, yeah. they have no idea what's going on. No. How do you help them cope with um, that? So if you're still breastfeeding, breastfeed them during um, ascent and descent. Okay. It helps the sucking, helps the pressure in yeah. their ear. And it's the same with older kids. Give them a bottle, a drink, um, something that they can suck on. Uh, while they're going up and down, and that will help help them with their ears. Good tip. Yeah, good tip. There you go. <laughs> uh, how do you keep your children safe? Okay. How do you how do you <laughs> occupy your children for a flight? I mean, whether you're doing a three hour flight yeah. or an eight hour flight, like how do you keep them busy for the whole time? Um. So every kid is different. Um. I personally, with little ones, try to keep reasonably short. Flights. So I haven't done a long haul yet. A lot of mamas have, and congratulations, I'm gonna be doing it next year. Um, but it there are lots of different ways to do it. I want to say do not be afraid of technology. Do not be afraid of technology. Our mothers didn't have it, um, but we have it. And have putting Paw Patrol or Peppa Pig on an iPad if your kids can stare at it. For five hours, do it for everyone's sanity. You're not gonna ruin them. I promise. Um, it it's not going to you know change their. I don't know whatever they say. Too much screen time is gonna do. This is not the instance. If you have the opportunity to use technology, do it. Um, other than that, I always say a new toy, a new book. So I head to the dollar store before a flight. Go into the book section, get some Paw Patrol books or whatever. Um, some coloring books work as well. Um, my friend uh, does pipe cleaners with beads on it. So, you know, little kids will be distracted by things like that. So, putting. Yes. As long as they don't get frustrated. As long as they don't get frustrated. All over the place. <laughs> exactly. And that would just be a whole other disaster. Um, but, uh, yeah, just something new that's going to 
engage them and excite them. Uh, if it's a toy they've seen before, they're going to get bored quickly and move right. on, and that's what you don't want. Um, walking up and down the plane, if you if you got to do it, do it. Um, and of course, sleep. You know, if if it's a long sleep, turn down the lights create some sort of space. When my son was still in the carrier and my second son will be in the carrier, that's a really good, safe space for the, for children. Right. Um, you know where they are and they, they feel your warmth and they want to sleep as well. When packing your bag to bring on the plane, I like to pack a uh, change of clothes for kids, change of clothes for yourself. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but I always get spit up on constantly. <laughs> this one, I'm, Covered. Depending on what stage you're in. Yes, yes. So I have a three-month-old, and he constantly spits up on me. Um, I'm doing laundry like daily. It's ridiculous. So to have a change of clothes for that, or if the other one spills something on me, then I've got me taken care of. Um, enough diapers for the plane ride and a bit of a um, delay should it happen. Mm -hmm. But don't laden yourself with too much, because you don't want to carry two kids and you know, a suitcase full of stuff. of stuff to bring on the plane with you um, when you get on the plane. Don't make your life easy. Don't don't bring it on the plane with you. So in terms of what you can bring on the plane, yeah. um, in terms of liquids and things like that, yeah. because obviously if you're not breastfeeding, you're either going to need to bring formula or yeah. milk, depending on the age of your child. Are you allowed to bring that on the plane? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so you can even bring... Um, bottles of water and then uh, formula in your different uh, in like a formula dispenser that's what yes. I used to travel with uh, they'll scan it so when you go through this is for the baby uh, pouches as well you can bring through uh, and they'll they'll scan it give it a quick scan you're on your way um, so you can bring that on absolutely um, at what age do they stop letting you bring it on for children like two two okay yeah so, so they'll say two. is the child over two yes okay so you technically can't can't bring it on it on um so in that case what i like to do is bring the bottles i have the empty bottles when mm -hmm. i get on the plane right away i'll ask the um the staff for some milk okay they it's it's harder the longer the flight goes on because right. more people want milk in their coffee or tea or or has right. you to it uh so right when i get on the plane i ask for that They'll also heat up the bottle for you. Uh, if, That's my next question. If you, <laughs> oh, you awesome, the <laughs> yeah, um, they're so fantastic on the plane. They really will help you out most of the time, um, and and yeah, just just ask for their help. But right when you get on, hi, I'm traveling with a baby. Give me I want to make this. Yeah, <laughs> I want to make this as easy as possible for all of us. Can I please have some milk? What do you think? And they'll say yes or no. But, I mean, they want a smooth flight too, right? So they don't Honestly, want they a want screaming baby. Everybody else that. getting the milk and me mother and baby screaming in the back. It is the exactly. because they didn't give you any milk. Exactly. Do you need to be bringing your car seat and stroller when you're traveling? That's a very good question. Um, again, it depends. Um, if you are going somewhere renting a car, you can rent a car seat, but they're usually the sit-up car seats, right. not, um, a not a bucket seat. Uh, so bring a bucket seat. You can check that in um, when you check in with, to get your tickets and everything. If you're traveling with a child, you normally can't check in online because they need to see the child. Right. Um, that's when you can put your uh, your bucket seat in and it'll come out the other side in luggage. What else you can do, um, if you want to bring a stroller, you can gate check it. So that means that you can walk right up to the plane with your stroller, close it up, they can take it down, you come off the other side, and it's right there. Okay. Which is ideal. I always do that with my stroller. Because then you can push them around the airport in it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so and you need it. that. You need right. it to help with a bag or to contain your child. Um, so always gate check your stroller. Um, but in terms of other things like um, pack and plays and cribs and things like that, mm -hmm. your resort should have them. So just call ahead and say, you know, what do you have on site? Same with diapers and wipes. Some places have them uh, on site as well. I know a cruise we were on had diapers and wipes for my son for the whole cruise. You didn't have to bring it. No, 
Awesome. Um, so just thinking how much space is that going to take yeah. up? Exactly. And you need that space for shopping, well. right? Right. So we're getting there. We know how to handle the flight. Yeah. What do we pack for your average week long trip? Oh, that is a good <laughs> question. Because I'm, I'm a chronic overpacker for myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so mm -hmm. now, if I'm going to be packing for my children too, like, how do you? not end up bringing your entire life with you <laughs> yeah okay um well see what is available on site mm -hmm. so that may limit the amount of diapers you have to bring because they can take up a lot of space um i will do uh two swimsuits so i'll bring some uh swim diapers and i do two swimsuits for the kids for the yourself? kids okay, okay yeah for me no no no, no. <laughs> no more than that for me just the kids just the kids okay. uh two and then you can switch out um, I also bring a uh, puddle jumper or life jacket, which essential. for kids doesn't take up very much room, but is like you said, essential. You have to have to have that. Um, I'll also bring a few toys uh, for them. Again, small ones that I can just, you know, toss in my suitcase from the dollar store that they can break and I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. I brought cups uh, for a vacation with um, my niece. My son was 15 months at the time, and my nephew, so she was two, he was five, and I brought these stacking cups, okay. and they were the hit of the trip. These kids played with these cups That's for so hours. And they didn't they take would, any space because they all fit inside They each all other. fit, and yeah, you can you know put like socks in them or whatever as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they would like fill them with water, and just something like that is perfect. Right. Um, I do a t-shirt for every day, uh, two extra. Just in case, because kids spill. Right. Um, and then I do three pairs of shorts and one sweater. Just in case. Just in case. And one pair of shoes to wear in the evening, because the likelihood is I don't know about your kids, but no shot my son is wearing shoes if, if it's warm and nice outside. I have to convince him to wear shoes in winter. So, um, mm -hmm. so doing that in you know by the beach is not going to happen. Uh, a hat is essential. Make sure you have a hat heading to the sun destination. Um, some people like to bring a tent as well. So like a sun tent you could get, yes. Toys R Us or something like that. And then I usually head to the dollar store and get um, a floaty that you can blow up. Again, they're super thin that you can right. put in the bottom of your bag. And then if you leave it behind, it doesn't matter. Right, because it was so cheap. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, kids, Clothes take up the least amount of space. Um, and sunscreen, of course. Oh my gosh. Don't forget the sunscreen, you guys. And one time we went on a trip and I forgot the sunscreen, and like, I am very pasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not mm -hmm. my husband. <laughs> my husband is Italian, so he does not require sunscreen. Yeah. He just sits this nice, beautiful tan in yeah. the sun. I turn into a lobster immediately. I had to buy sunscreen. He got $70. For one little mm -hmm. thing of sunscreen. That's no good. <laughs> no good. Don't forget the sunscreen. No, but you know what's really great for kids as well? Um, those stick sunscreens. Yes. So I don't know if you've tried to put sunscreen on a moving child that is also wet. I'm sure you guys have, have, have tried to do this. <laughs> yeah. Those sticks for sun sunscreen are perfect because the kids can do it themselves as well when you yes. rub it in. But they're handy, pull them out, quick wipe forehead, you know, T-zone, whatever, rub, rub it in, and they're good to go. Um, so those are my absolute favorite. I always have one in my backpack in the summer as well, just, you know, in case we're out, and I'm like, oh, it's going to be a bit pink, you know, that sort of thing. And they're just, they're great. And, um, sometimes bug repellent as well is good yes. for the evenings. A lot of resorts spray for mosquitoes, but it's good to have it on hand, even just for ankles, little wrists. Yeah. Just give them a nice little spray. You know, kids are going to deal with a mosquito bite a lot less. I don't know, with a lot less patience than, you know, yeah. you or I would. Although I I don't do well with bites with kids. And I I'd lather up I don't in bug them. spray. Oh, oh my don't care gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. And use your common sense as well. And as a parent, um, know what's best for your children and what's not. And enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself and enjoy this time with your kids. And that's what I try to tell myself as I gear up for a trip. And 
as a travel writer and, um, and being on air, I travel with my kids a lot. So in the next three months, I think we've got like four or five trips. And I try to think I get to travel with my kids, you know, like I get to spend this time with them because I guarantee in 10 years, they're going to want nothing to do with me or hopefully more than 10 years, but you know, they're going to get too cool for me and not want to, right. to hang out with me. Or you're fortunate enough that you, you have the financial ability to travel with your children. Exactly. Because people that don't have that and they wish they did. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, just, I think that the main thing is just mindset that you are, uh, that it's going to be a little, some, there'll be some disaster at some point. But mother, there's always some disaster at some point. It's mother. just going to be disaster like boy or Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, uh, if you would like to find Natalie on Instagram, I'll put her handle in the link below so you can follow on her and get all kinds of cool travel tips and find out, you know, when she's going to be on air sharing more. Um, and I'll put the link to my Instagram handle uh, in the description below as well in case you want to follow along my daily motherhood journey. And don't forget to subscribe and I will see you back here next week. Bye. Cheers. Ciao. Mm. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment letting me know what your biggest takeaway was, and share it with your friends. If you loved it, please subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified of when I put out a new video, which is every Thursday, and hopefully I'll see you then. Cheers!